Hey, let me take a bite. Hold on, hold on. Do we call this hours. an addiction or do we just Yeah. Hey we got one last week. Right? Last yeah. week. Yep. We got tired long. Two weeks in a row. When was the last time you got one? Um like during the June summer. For a while. Oh after a while. shit. The yeah. summer? There's Max. I think that was the last time I ever like drank that much though. Yeah, I saw pictures there was like OD. No, when I was getting that was the night I got dragged out, right? No. Drugged? Dra no. Dragged. <laughs> dragged out. Yeah, you got yeah. Dragged out. It was that night. Yeah, the security the security was really rough on you though. I don't know why. Yeah. Dude, I was like I had like marks the next day on my arm. And then Sarah and then Mara was like, okay, you don't have to like well. Who was yelling? I don't know, I think Myra was yelling at the security guys. Oh. Uh, the, the, the Uber driver dropped us off like, ten, like three blocks away from the club. And I remember Myra and Sarah were waiting at the club, their Uber. I was like, oh my god, my car is there, so I could get the drum bag. I was like, oh my god. The, ever ended up throwing up, and then we have to get my car, drive back, and he already threw up. No one's gonna accept this. So I had to pick him up. Ten minutes later, but yeah, it was good. I basically saved his life. He's a threat when he's like throwing. in my head as I was driving. I was like, oh my god, is ever but it die? takes a while for me to get. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm so that was just that one time special occasions. Well, that was my birthday, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait. Never got that. What? Wait, yeah, bunch you of have, bro. A bunch of creeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I only throw up once. Not a, not a fun experience whatsoever. That was fun, though. That kind of push becomes free throws and so Hey, you go. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 do you want back? No, it's right here. Matt, are you filming right now? Does it look like I'm filming? No, it's okay. <laughs> Would you get a chink sandwich? Finally got a clothing rack. It's about time. I have all the samples laid out. Um, I think later this week, though, we're gonna have new samples of these coming in, uh, which we've been working on for. Five months now? Yeah. Oh, talking a long ass time. But, um, yeah, like, I haven't shown pickups in a minute, but I didn't really pick up that much. I guess, like, this you can start out with. I you follow me on Instagram, I've been wearing this a shit ton. And it's been like, Pretty faded. The denim is like pretty soft now. Is it pretty soft? Yeah, it is pretty soft. Yeah. Where do you get that? I found it at uh, Second Street, which is like a consignment store. We go in there pretty often to like different locations around LA, and I like we always like find something kind of cool. Yeah. He found that sweater. Oh, I found this. Oh wait, no, you found that waistline. Waistline in Studio City. <laughs> Showed this in the last video, but this is the hostage hoodies. Shout out Winter. Uh, I've been wearing this like every day. I have my little blue pearl pin. I think uh, I think on Renz's story. It's like two weeks. Yeah, she said two weeks. So I linked the all the information in my last video, but I'll do it again in this video. So yeah, I've been wearing this a shit ton. It's really nice hoodie. Um, Terry. As you can see, it feels super nice. And you see like the fade on it. Nice and cropped and boxy. And I feel like the the tag she did. It's 100% cotton machine wash. Lay flat to dry. And then um, I got these. 
So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen these. These are the Y Project Cowboy jeans. I don't know how many colors they made in this, but I think they just made a black. A black one. They did like a gray one too, no? Like an all black one and then a gray one. Oh yeah, so three. Yeah. They made the, the ones that go up to the... Mm -hmm. This is the thigh. I need to get these fixed because whoever's had these last did some DIY shit to it. It doesn't look that good. <laughs> hey, what is look this back ass patch, bro? Like, bro oh, wait, I didn't even see that before. Yeah, I gotta get that fixed. The guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, um, I'm wearing these jeans. What are those? Every day. Oh, what are those? These are the, the next release <laughs> the Tilga Gallery Tusk Denim. Um, final production pairs are gonna be a little bit more washed than these, but the fit is basically down. Waist adjusters, high waisted, um, oversized back pockets, but um, there is something like a key detail missing on this pair that I will show off in the final production pairs, which we should be getting in like the next couple weeks. Getting some DMs about when the pants are releasing, but um, I assure you that within the next month, the rollout shit will start to come out and more information on the release will be on the rise, probably around like the holidays or even earlier than that, depending on how production goes. But yeah, don't worry, these. If you see the heel light. Cause I, I literally have just been wearing boots with it, so. On your pair, if you don't like the drapiness of like how long the inseams are, you can always get it tailored uh, for like 10 bucks. And um, we're gonna offer three different inseams depending on the size you get. So, so the extra small and the small sizes are gonna be a 32 inseam. The mediums to the largest will be a 33 inseam. I believe the extra large is gonna be a 33 inch seam as well. But with the waist adjusters, you can cinch them two waist sizes down. So uh, yeah, pretty versatile in terms of the sizing. Extra large is gonna go up to a size 36, so yeah. Um, this hat too. So Mark, I think he's releasing these within, I think before the year ends. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the only colorway. I know he's working on a different colorway, but I don't want to say anything right now because I'm not sure if he's releasing it, but leather straps on the back, heavy canvas, falling so far guy. Really good shape. And then on the lining, black on black. Uh, really nice shape. Reminds me of like Skater Boy era, like five panel hats. Yeah, I've been wearing this a shit ton when I, especially if I like don't do my hair. And yeah, it's like a good everyday hat. Uh, you guys, do you get anything? It's vintage. Um, reminds me of Celine a lot. But Celine actually took inspo from these type of jackets from the 80s. So yeah, just this. Gotta get it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go zoom in then, huh? Ah, this is something I've wanted to like talk about for a while, but um, I saw in like my last video, there's a comment about how uh, sampling and like the process of sampling is like kind of frustrating. It is at times, especially when you can't translate the vision of like what you want in each garment. Um, especially because it is cut and sew to uh, an actual like physical product. But it's it's all like a learning experience. There's actually like a really funny story about how we even started with our varsity jacket. I mean, you see like the first sample that we actually got initially. But I think we, uh, with this, it was definitely like a, a big learning experience, especially with like actually like making a garment works in terms of like the 
fabric sourcing and making a pattern and even like finding the background people in terms of like the production side of things and like a pattern maker um it's super hard and i get questions like that all the time on instagram always a learning experience especially in this field because not like the the industry is gate kept but like when people finally find their footing in terms of like making cut and sew garments they don't want to sort of give away where they go for certain things but uh initially with our varsity jacket we thought we could go head on with it and do all the sourcing for our fabrics ourselves and we were we were like walking around the fashion district of downtown LA trying to find fabrics for this initial varsity jacket but it was like so so close like it was so difficult to communicate with like the different vendors and I guess our naiveness and inexperience in a way kind of slowed the process down with our initial drop. Um, as in have like his story and experience with like how it started. Yeah, it was, it was just like, we we're just doing a whole bunch of random stuff. Like we we're like ever said our naiveness and our inexperience and like, we had no one to guide us, no one to tell us about where to go, what to do. So we're like, I think we should go to- Yeah, we were kind of like skipping steps. We're just, we were skipping steps. Like, we were just like, oh, maybe we need to go find fabrics, right? We need to go fashion to shake, right? There's fabrics everywhere. So we went to fashion to shake and we figured out like, nah, bro, that's not, that was not the move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this one time I kind of looked for the wool. Yeah. It was the wool yeah. um, for the body of our varsity. Talking to one of the vendors there and then like, I shit you not, like mid conversation, he like fell asleep while talking to us. Yeah, it was crazy. Like after that day, we were kind of just like over doing or going in that route. And like, we kind of took a step back a little bit. And we we're just like, damn, we need help. Like not help, but like we need to do more research in terms of like how to actually get this thing going. And then found a studio based in LA, kind of like, kind of like the middleman in terms of like sourcing fabrics for mm -hmm. us and uh, connecting us with like a pattern maker but because of that we had to pay the premium price of like having those services done in LA yeah uh, so we definitely like overpaid for our first three samples yeah the truth and the harsh reality of like actually starting like a cut and sew brand uh, I've been pretty open since we started since i've started this channel with like showing you guys the process and what it's like turning an idea into like a physical garment and i want to continue to share those experiences with everybody um but even now that we've established a good relationship with our production manager um which makes everything a lot easier. Like shout out our production manager cause like he does a lot of like the technical and like heavy lifting side of running like this brand, which I appreciate a lot. Like we all appreciate that. Um, I mean, you can see with like all these samples that we have lined up, ignoring this, but like all this stuff that's like, besides the varsity jacket or samples that like obviously like we're not, happy with 100% but it's still cool to see the process in um, making clothes I guess like uh, even like a basic hoodie like this like this is an application sample application sample is just basically all the um, applicates that are like put onto like a garment like the wash and then like you can see the staining that's like this is the like don't get me wrong this is like a very complete sample but like it's just so that we can see what stuff looks like on the clothing so we can call out for revisions and stuff shit like that to like initial like washes and like the hand distressing and stuff um just little shit like that that we have to constantly go back to um, in terms of like the drawing board to figure out what we can do to fix certain items and what we can do to improve it and even with this like this isn't done like whatsoever and 
we're not even sure if we're gonna like even continue on it but like yeah it takes a while to mm. be satisfied with something that you're gonna release to the public and yeah it's not it's not easy for sure but it's a fun process and you learn as you go yep. which i think is super important and i mean i'm happy that i get to like show this entire process to you guys because i think it's cool i think other people will learn from our mistakes as well um, and yeah so yeah so all the samples laid out like i said we'll have more samples coming in this coming week that uh, i'm definitely going to show off but yeah Um, I don't know what size it is. Medium or medium or large? medium? I think it's medium. Medium or let's see it first. Not, small. not small, it's medium. I think this should be small. Yeah, because we want to be oversized. It's really nice, though. Mm -hmm. Ignore the sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah. Oh. Hey, what was that? What, what was that brand right there? Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, it says F. Yeah, it was F. <laughs> 